And let's start with the source of our quarrels. When there's division, when, when there is uh, this going on, when disagreement has intensified and be, has become something that it never should have gotten to, what does the Bible say? Look what James says again. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? No, it comes from her. It comes from him. And, and that's not what the scripture says. The first place to look, for me to look, if I'm quarreling with somebody, okay, especially in the body of Christ, especially in the body of Christ, okay, if, if, if there's division now between me and another person, first I need to look at myself first. Could there be fault with the other person? Sure. But first, I got to look at me. That's what James says. You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace. He gives us more grace. Don't miss that. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. See, some of us would be tempted to say, wow, James really had a ADD moment here. He starts with quarrels and then it's just like, squirrel! You know, don't do this, don't do that. Don't. And, and how many know the Holy Spirit never makes a mistake? Right? Right? So when the Holy Spirit is putting this all together, he's, he's saying that, okay, when there is division amongst the body of Christ and when this kind of stuff takes place, then it's time to do an inward search because there might be some things that are lighting the match for that to take place. And James identifies some things that light the match. Let me show you those. Bottom of page one, evil desires. Evil desires. <laughs> Again, this is what Scripture says. He says, it's not the source your pleasures you lust for things, but you do not have those things. The first thing, okay? The first thing, bottom paragraph, the first thing James says causes fights is the brokenness of our own desires. We desire wrong things. We see things that others have and then we wish we had them. That will strike the match with quarrels and division amongst the body of Christ. Because there's jealousy. There's envy. There's a desire to have something that that person has that I don't have. That's called covetousness. <laughs> Some people call that Monday. Monday. But it's serious stuff. John kind of wraps everything up as far as our evil desires go by saying this in 1 John chapter 2. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Where are our desires today. Where's our desires? Um, boy, it'd do a lot of us some good to go overseas. It really would. We have the richest poor people in the world. The United States does. And in fact, one of the guys that, that's working on the drywall, he's Ukrainian. <laughs> 
I said, you are? I said, yeah, my, my, I won't even attempt the accent, but his parents moved them and the kids to Ohio. But his grandparents are still in Ukraine. I said, wow, are they okay? Yes, they're on the west side, the western part of the country, and they're okay, they're okay, they're okay. But, you know, we, sh- we showed, those of you who were here Sunday, we showed you the Convoy Hope video of what Convoy is doing at the Poland-Ukraine uh, border. I mean, there are people that are just thanking God for a bowl of soup. Um, I think sometimes we really take for granted the goodness of God. It's not on here, but Paul made the statement in Philippians that he has been in plenty and he had been in want. In other words, he had plenty of resources and money and everything. And then there were times that he was greatly in need. But what he learned was the secret of being content in all those situations. How? He said, because I can do all things through Christ who who strengthens me. That contentment does not come from your willpower. It comes from God. It is an act of God. It is a move of God. It is a maturity in Christ that causes us to not have to worry about this, but our desires and our pursuits are after God.